Today, it's pretty hard to imagine any theme park in the UK opening up the world's tallest roller coaster. Maybe, at a stretch, you could see it happening at one of Merlin's parks. Although, with Alton Tower's ever-present height restrictions, it's tough to picture for even the most vivid of imaginations. But imagining this occurring at Blackpool Pleasure Beach today, well, that feels practically impossible to even envision. But just 30 years ago, this was very much a reality. The big one opened up in 1994 as the world's tallest roller coaster. And although it didn't keep this crown for long, it has taken a whopping 30 years for its height to be surpassed here in the UK. So, what on earth was in the water which allowed such a feat to be achieved in 1994? Well, as we've referenced in many other videos, 1994 was the UK's year of the roller coaster. It seems that theme park enthusiasm was most definitely present in the water that year. Back in the 1980s, the UK theme park industry had really begun to boom. What were once just small-scale tourist attractions, such as zoos and historic homes, were developing into full-fledged amusement attractions. Thanks to this, three of our parks decided it was time to really establish themselves themselves. Alton Towers and Drayton Manor both really wanted to make sure they stood out from the rest, resulting in Nemesis and Shockwave being built. Clearly, this was the year of the unique custom steel coaster, with the world's first, or at least UK's first, element. Now, unlike these two parks, Blackpool Pleasure Beach had a much longer history within the amusement industry. Whereas Drayton Manor began as a zoo and Alton Towers as a historic estate, not bringing in rides until the 1950s, Blackpool Pleasure Beach had been providing thrills since 1896. The park did not need to establish itself, but instead needed to make sure that it was keeping up. Thanks to this, Blackpool Pleasure Beach owner Jeffrey Thompson set his sights sky high. Jeffrey Thompson had already invested millions of pounds into Blackpool Pleasure Beach, bringing the park attractions such as Steeplechase, Avalanche, and Revolution. But Thompson decided that this wasn't enough. With its long legacy, Blackpool Pleasure Beach was still the UK's amusement industry giant, but Alton Towers was very clearly catching up. Thompson was well aware of the ever-increasing competition from other parks in the country and decided that Blackpool Pleasure Beach needed to do something big to compete and something big they certainly did. Claiming a world record-breaking title is actually something we have become pretty familiar with here in the UK. With their secret weapons, Alton Towers are always pretty certain to make sure they can claim a world's first something or other. Now, sometimes this is something as silly as the world's first roller coaster experience using wood and fire, but for the most part, their claims have been pretty legit. Thanks to Alton Towers, we here in the UK have received the world's first B&M dive coaster and flying coaster. And we still hold the record for the roller coaster with the most inversions in the world. Thanks to both Colossus and the Smiler, this record has remained ours for many years now. But world's tallest was never a competition Alton Towers could enter. As already referenced, thanks to its location, the park is pretty restricted with how high it can build. They may have been clever in working around this over the years digging pits and holes to make room for their coasters, but they've pretty much pushed the limits of this without ever coming close to record-breaking heights, which is more than fine. Like most others, I wouldn't trade Alton Tower's stunning location for such coaster records. Thanks to this, we here in the UK have only held the world's tallest title once. The race to the tallest coaster in the world actually began over 100 years ago, just like big city eateries like to claim best coffee or best pizza in the world, theme parks love to label their attractions as tallest or fastest something or other in the world. It's hard to track exactly what coaster was the tallest right from the start, as records aren't quite so clear, but the claims for the title can be better traced. It seems that 1917 was really the first year we saw a coaster pride itself on this title. Giant Coaster opened up at Paragon Park in Massachusetts. This 98-foot tall roller coaster was the first to claim the record and promoted itself as such. Throughout the years, this record would be passed around many times and would also become subject to much scrutiny from theme park enthusiasts. 
In the early years, the record holders would be clear. Notable entries would be Utah's 1919 coaster aptly titled Giant Racer, which would be the first to surpass 110 feet and Mexico's Montana Rusa, which with the same height would eventually become the sole holder of this record in the 1950s, when Giant Racer closed and was also the first outside of the USA to hold this record. Although, it is worth noting that during this time, another world's tallest did open and also close. This was Lake Placid's bobsled, which opened in 1937, and is still the world record holder for the tallest and fastest bobsled coaster ever built, although it sadly had to close in 1946. Following this, the invention of Schwarzkopf shuttle loop coasters would complicate things even further. These not full circuit coasters would claim large structural heights, but the carriages themselves would not fully utilize these. Therefore, many enthusiasts do not count these models and only consider full circuit coasters as contenders. The same can be said for the later reverse freefall model of coaster, such as Superman the Escape over at Magic Mountain. So, without these entries, the next significant entry in the list would be the Aerodynamics Mega Looper. Although other full circuit coasters had managed to take the record during this time, this new model would see the first coasters to surpass 170 feet. These were 1988 170-foot shockwave at Six Flags Great America and 1989's 173-foot The Great American Scream Machine at Six Flags Great Adventure. However, these entries did not hold the title for very long at all, as 1989 would see one of the most significant moments in the record's history, both in general and for our focus on Blackpool Pleasure Beach. In 1989, Cedar Point, located in Sandusky, Ohio, opened up Magnum XL 200. Constructed by Aerodynamics, this was the world's very first hypercoaster, meaning a coaster which exceeds 200 feet in height. At 205 feet, it officially opened to the public on May 6, 1989, as the world's tallest, fastest, and steepest complete circuit roller coaster. With all the press surrounding its hypercoaster nature, many others within the industry became interested. Thanks to this, Magnum is credited with having started off something known as the Coaster Wars, referring to a period of time during which amusement parks all around the world rapidly competed to build the next tallest and fastest roller coasters. Jeffrey Thompson was one of these industry leaders, and he became interested in besting Cedar Point's record. He actually first flew out to Cedar Point to try out this world's first hypercoaster before almost immediately deciding that Blackpool Pleasure Beach needed their own. Thus, he contacted Aerodynamics and ride designer Ron Toomer. With £12 million and a dream, Jeffrey Thompson tasked this team with designing a taller version of Magnum XL 200. His dream became a reality and in 1994, Blackpool Pleasure Beach opened up Pepsi Max the Big One. With a height of 213 feet, this coaster achieved what Thompson set out to do and stole the world's tallest title from Magnum XL 200. For any park at the time, this would have been a huge deal. But for the British amusement park industry, which, compared to the US one, was still in its early days, this was an unbelievable achievement. The big one maintained this world record until 1996 when it was surpassed by Fujiyama at a height of 259 feet at Fuji Q Highland in Japan. Following this, the coastal wars continued, but the UK would never make another entry into the world's tallest list. In May 2000, Cedar Point opened up Millennium Force. Another world's first, this 310 feet coaster was the very first Giga Coaster. Once again, Cedar Point would be home to the world's tallest coaster, surpassing Fujiyama. However, Japan quickly took the record back with Steel Dragon 2000 at Nagashima Spa Land. This 318 foot coaster held the record from August 2000 until 2003, when Cedar Point once again took back this title. This would be the last time the park would hold this record and it held the record thanks to the opening of the very first Stratocoaster, the 420-foot tall Top Thrill Dragster. Sadly for Cedar Point, this coaster was surpassed by the 456-foot King Dakar at Six Flags Great Adventure, which opened in 2005. 
still the world's tallest roller coaster today, this coaster is set to be surpassed by Intamin's Falcon's Fly. A 640 foot coaster expected to open at Six Flags Tadia in October 2024. This will be the very first Exa coaster, and it's currently hard to envision riding this, let alone anything taller. It certainly will be a feat to see when this coaster does open. For Cedar Point, the opening of Magnum XL 200 marked the start of something big. Since then, the park made two more entries into the world's tallest competition. Blackpool Pleasure Beach, on the other hand, has not proved quite so successful. With Jeffrey Thompson in charge, Blackpool Pleasure Beach lived its golden years. But unfortunately, the 2000s have not been so kind. Blackpool Pleasure Beach has seen the removal of many of its classic attractions, and very few replacements for these. The opening of Icon in 2018 did see the first roller coaster to be built at the park in over a decade. While this coaster is great, it's not an addition that is very representative of the park itself. I won't drone on too much about the state of the park at the moment, I've already dedicated a whole video to that. But let's just say, time has not been so kind to Blackpool Pleasure Beach. World record aside, the big one has maintained its title as the tallest coaster in the UK. That is, until Thought Park opened up Hyperia on the 24th of May this year. This Mack roller coaster will reach a height of 236 feet, not even topping the coaster that knocked the big one off its throne. But it must be made clear that world records aren't necessary for good roller coasters. In fact, often the best ones in my opinion hold absolutely none. Just look at Nemesis another 1994 addition to the UK. Now Nemesis Reborn, this recordless coaster has fared far better even prior to the retrack than the big one. The UK theme park industry may not have battled much in the coaster wars, but that doesn't mean that they haven't opened up some world-class roller coasters. In fact, since 1994, Alton Towers and Thought Park have both really boomed. Blackpool Pleasure Beach may be far from its golden years, but the same cannot be said for these UK parks. Hyperia may not be breaking world records, but it is still a major and incredibly exciting addition to the UK's coaster liner. It might be bittersweet to see the big one finally lose its UK record, but it's certainly been a long time coming. Not only is Hyperia set to be the tallest coaster in the country, it's also set to steal the nearby stealth record as our fastest roller coaster. Moreover, all of this aside, it simply looks like an enjoyable roller coaster. Exploring the legacy of the big one certainly brings up many notable points in theme park history, and no matter what, this coaster will Will always be an incredibly important one. Personally, I can't wait to get on Hyperia and would love to hear what element of this coaster you are most excited to experience. Plus, let me know how many coasters which were once the world's tallest have you been on? Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my links in the description and some of my other videos.